Katrina, you started this company a decade ago, and I know from our many conversations over the years, this company has been a labor of love for you. How did you come to this decision and why now? Yeah, I think, um, you know, this is a long time in the making. And um, for a long time, I have um, known and totally been open to the possibility that there was going to be able to be somebody that um, could help us see more possibility at Stitch Fix and open up kind of how, um, you know, I've felt so such deep conviction in what personalization can mean in this space. And at the same time, we still have so much work ahead of us. And so, um, you know, from the moment I met Elizabeth a couple of years ago, I had this spark of like, this really could be that person that really can open up possibility for us that really has that like ambitious and ambition and excitement and understanding of what we can do um, and so really from the moment that I met her a couple of years ago we've been kind of orchestrating this um, this transition and to be where we are today and so um, and so we're really excited to be able to share that news to be able it's a little bit of a relief honestly where we've both been working on this for so long to be able to share it with the world us being able to work um, hand in hand over the last 12 plus months especially during a time of crisis like COVID um, it's really Really actually been as much as of course the last year has been super challenging it's been a really great way for us to build a really strong foundation of a relationship together to set the stage for the future i'd love to hear the story how you asked her to do this the courtship how you popped the question, if you will. It's a big question. <laughs> you know, from the very early days, we talked about a role that was going to be with succession planning in mind. And so, um, so you know, I think in we talked about a role that was going to be meaningful in scope from the beginning, but, you know, had in mind this idea that, you know, that Elizabeth would be taking the reins eventually. And so um, I don't know if like the popping the question was as much of the like dramatic part as much as really like we spent a lot of quality time together talking about really deep things. Things. We got an executive coach to work together from the very from our very first day working together, and so this really has been, you know, kind of these marriage analogies are are right ones because it really has been a labor of love. Elizabeth, you started working at Stitch Fix a little over a year ago after working at Bain for more than two decades. What was this process like from your perspective? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, I just feel so grateful to have met Katrina and that she was looking for somebody to play this exciting role. I think. In my vantage point in my prior role, I sat at this intersection of consumer and technology and Stitchfix was like the needle in the haystack, this company that somehow really got the consumer, had the merchandising, the supply chain and having worked with a lot of those traditional players, I just knew it was not in their DNA to transform for this new world we're living in. And then you have a lot of these tech platforms that um, they dabble in commerce, but it's not really their core business. And then a meeting Katrina, it just became clear both we had chemistry, but also she, um, Katrina has so little ego. She's kind of up for anybody who's going to make things better. And that was just so unique to me and so surprising, to be honest. And one of the conversations I remember is her kind of bringing up this idea of like me being there for the second founding of the company. Katrina, I wonder, there has to be some emotion there in your, and you're not going anywhere. You're becoming executive chair. You are staying on as an employee. You're going to focus on social impact, but, but is there any emotion in sort of letting go a little? And what does that feel like? I do feel a little bit of like, it's, I don't know if trepidation is the right word, but like I'm starting a new job to your point. Like I'm starting a role um, as executive chairman. I um, am really excited to be able to look at the world of social impact and sustainability and, and how I can really have an impact on our company, but also the industry in that way. And that's all going to be new and different. And so, you know, I have a little bit of like, like new job jitters of like, you're really excited for it, but you know, also a little bit like, what is this really going to be like? And so that's kind of where I feel emotionally now. Elizabeth Stitch Fix has 8,000 employees and stylists and Bain is known for going into companies and changing them. Do you think there's change needed at Stitch Fix and what would that change be? I mean, I think that was actually part of the idea and change in the most positive sense. I mean, the engine that Stitch Fix has built around this notion of human touch personalization powered by data science is so unique, but it's only the beginning. And so I think from the change aspect, change can mean so many different things, but I think the transformative change, and that's actually a lot of the language Katrina and I have been using, we had an all hands this morning, and a lot of that was focused on change um, in the most positive sense. Like, 
I mean, it's kind of, I think for any company, it's sort of change or die. Like we need to innovate and we need to do new things. And we're in this fortunate situation that um, the past year, I think has just demonstrated for us, like now is our time. Um, consumers are shifting online at record rates in apparel. Um, we think it went from 25 to 40% just over the time period of COVID. And that is really the moment that is meant for Stitch Fix. And what's so exciting to us is the purchase occasions that are now moving online are the are, are the one that are so uniquely suited for us. It's the ones that are about browse and discovery and personalization. And so how do we make our model available to everybody? How do we make it as accessible as possible? How do we bring, bring personalized shopping to every consumer in this very unique way with the power of our personalization capabilities, our styling community? And so, yeah, I mean, I do think I'm here for change, but change for the good and with big ambition of what we can do. So maybe there wasn't the drama of a popping the question moment, but I'd love to hear the story about how you guys first met and when you sort of first realized that this could be a thing from, from both of you. I'm friends with one of um, our board members, actually our original investor, Steve Anderson of Baseline. And as I was kind of exploring um, the next chapter in my career, he was like, I really just think you need to meet Katrina. And so that's really how it all began. And uh, Katrina and I met and there just was this chemistry. And to her point, we've known each other a while. I mean, we went through various phases of getting to know each other. What's the role I could start to play in the business? Um, this openness of me potentially succeeding her, like it all kind of, it wasn't like one big pop. It was sort of this evolving dialogue that occurred over time. Um, and I feel like we just, we so deeply invested in really understanding each other as human beings before I joined the company that it felt like we had this like truly deep relationship from early on. I actually kind of like to joke as she was describing the role she could envision me wanting to play. It was like, it reminded me of honestly meeting my husband. I'm like, is this guy too good to be true? <laughs> and I kind of felt that way about Katrina. I'm like, can I really trust this? Um, and eventually I'm obviously it's all working out. So does that mean there were a lot of coffees, dinners, breakfast, phone calls, texts, emojis, or however we, exactly. however we do it these days? <laughs> It was really funny. There are a lot of courting analogies because it was a lot of text messages and a lot of phone calls and a lot of walks. We did a lot. It was pre-COVID and we still did a lot of walks in the Presidio and near the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, and we have some, actually, I was thinking when we shared the news, we could have shared a selfie from back then too, because I think there's some like beautiful scenery and selfies along the way. Um, but it was, you know, it was a, a great way to be able to get to know each other and to be able to start this relationship right. So Katrina, I know running a personal styling service, as with many businesses during a pandemic has been a roller coaster. You did have some layoffs in June and then Stitch Fix just sort of outshined um, much of the apparel industry because of the flexibility you offered. Talk to us through that journey now that you have some perspective, you know, after what surely was an incredibly trying and unpredictable time. For a business yeah leader. it was i mean it really was um i you know i had such gratitude that elizabeth had been with a company something like six or eight weeks before the pandemic started and um i was so grateful to have her because um it it was a lot you know i think trying to navigate how do we we as you said we have eight thousand employees we have thousands of people who work in our warehouses like you know trying to figure out how do we actually operate in a way that's safe and also is building trust with our employees and um and you know at the same time kind of navigating how the industry is changing like it was a really unpredictable and um and a year that I think I felt really grateful for having the team that I had and also for a business model that is largely flexible like you know we were able to iterate our merchandise away from categories like work and blazers and into categories like athleisure that people are looking for the notion of trying things on in the comfort of your own home has never been more compelling than in the last year. And so, you know, while people were buying less clothes, our model was much, much more attractive than, uh, than existing models. And so, you know, e-commerce was accelerated. I think acceptance of our model was accelerated. Um, and, you know, I think there's, um, you know, just a larger understanding that personalization is super important in this space that, you know, suddenly people are starting to realize they live with all their things. They realize there's a few things I really, really love. And so, you know, to find the one pair of jeans that somebody really, really loves is exactly what we are best in the world at doing. And so, you know, there actually were a lot of underlying trends this last year that really accelerated the opportunity for our business. Elizabeth, Stitch Fix shares hit a big high in January, but have come down since then. How concerned are you that once 
people can go back to stores, they will go back to stores in droves and that that could dent some of this new demand that you've seen? You know, Emily, it's such a good question because one might think like, are we going to go back to the way we did things before? And I think what we've seen is that consumer behavior has really shifted. People have leaned in and adopted. You know, one thing we've seen over this time period, there have been moments of the world opening back up. We actually see an acceleration when that happens because people are spending again. They want to go out. Um, we've actually seen in some of the geographies, um, you know, the South, the Pacific Northwest, places where there was um, retail foot traffic and opening, we actually were outperforming our overall growth rate, which to us is a sign that people are really voting with their feet and moving into this new model of shopping. And so I think we feel more confident than ever that this is, is serving a way that people, wouldn't you rather, you know, go out to dinner with friends, have lunch with um, your mom, then go shopping and try on things in a department store clothing room. Like you wouldn't you rather have that time back? And so I think um, one of the things I had looked at before joining was like, what are the, the elements of value? What are the things people love so much about Stitch Fix? And part of it is the tremendous convenience and that's never gonna go away. Part of it is we make people feel more attractive because of this notion of personalization. Those are enduring values that I think are gonna be even more beneficial. And what we're doing with our shopping feed and that shop experience is we kind of feel like we're moving from our kind of our DVD era into the streaming era where at any moment you can see what's there for you. And um, I think that just opens up the entire market for us and in a way that is going to be accessible to all consumers. I do think that we are seeing a broader casualization trend where, you know, people are not anticipating, you know, by, like everybody who's you know, in the office five days a week, certainly wearing a suit five days a week, like that trend is not going to be as strong as it was before. That contingent of people is not going to be as large as it was before. And so we are seeing and to be clear, this was happening before. Like we used to get request notes that were like, I can wear jeans at work now. What kind of jeans did I wear? And so, you know, this casualization of the workforce is kind of one thing that we're, that we're certainly seeing. During kind of this overall period, we've seen our athleisure business grow 350%. You know, we think that that extraordinary growth is going to taper, but we're still seeing people kind of opting into that. And as they're beginning to request things, hey, I might be in the office a little more, they're actually asking for comfortable work clothes. And so we're kind of calling it work leisure, you know? And a lot of people are saying like, I wanna work in a hybrid mode in the future. We are starting to see those date night requests again. Actually <laughs> one fun nugget and trend we saw was 130% increase in our headband category, which I like to think was the Amanda Gorman effect from the inauguration. Wow. Um, but Finding these signals of what people are looking for, you know, sort of those micro trends to just more broadly um, wanting to start to go out again. And that's great for us because it means that people are shopping again. So if there's one headline takeaway, it's more headbands. Is that it? What else do I need to set some trends for me, Elizabeth? What else do I need to know? What else do I need in my closet? All of the Zoom accessories, I think, have been doing really well. Like, I think those the earring necklace sets have been doing really well. There's been a lot of, like, you know, people dressing for Zoom that, like, I mean, we all understand where people are definitely, you know, in a world where you don't get to have the whole outfit, you know, shown off where, you know, you can selectively do the headband, the scrunchies, like we've actually sold a lot of hair accessories lately, but, you know, anything that that's kind of a way to show your personality on Zoom is definitely something that we've seen a lot of, of good sales in. What does the next 10 years look like? I mean, I think the big idea is that we have been so successful with this idea of getting some information from you, telling us what you're looking for, and then taking the benefit of our algorithms and our stylists to pick out a handful of items, send things, and you, you pick what you love and send back what you don't. And that's been a very successful model. We keep getting better and better. But most consumers might want something at the tip of their finger. How can I just see something right now? And so really our foray into this personalized shopping experience is I think going to be a big part of our next 10 years. And so the idea that you, Emily, can open up your own personal store. You can see you know, that new pair of white jeans you need for summer and everything in that store fits you perfectly and represents you. That's just like a fundamentally different way to shop. Imagine our stylists being inside that experience and making suggestions based on what they've seen from you in the past or live chatting with somebody just immediately as you're thinking about the weekend. Um, the ability for us to bring all of those elements of our offering together at the tip of a finger, I think is what's so powerful. And really what I think will characterize this next uh, phase of e-commerce is this movement from search and scroll to browse and discovery, which we're so uniquely suited to be able to do. Um, the nation, nature of 
transactional to relationship based like we are all about building these deep human relationships. And so I think the future of stitch fix is like all of the selection in the world curated just for you, what are those items that are really just meant for you and having the ability to engage with human touch um, at the moment that you want it. And that really removes the need for a lot of the inconvenient elements of how shopping worked in the past.